from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2018. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back everyone, it's the live CUBE coverage here in Las Vegas for VMworld 2018. Three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage, we got two sets. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Stu Miniman. Our next guest is Adam Rasner, who's the Vice President of Technology Operations at AutoNation. Welcome to theCUBE, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. So you guys are a customer of all this virtualization stuff. What's going on in your company? Tell us what's happening at AutoNation. What are you guys at now with IT operations? Where are you guys going? How are you guys building to the cloud? What's the strategy? Sure, so I, uh, AutoNation's exploding. We have 280 new car dealerships. We have uh, 80 collision centers. We just launched our own precision parts line. Um, we're also looking at other technologies to uh, automate the car buying experience. So we want to make like an Amazon-like car buying experience online. So that requires a lot of new technology and digitalization. Yeah. I, I Talk a little bit about that, because I know I've looked at cars in the last couple of years, and now you know I do so much of it online, I feel like I could do the whole experience from my phone if I wanted, so how much are you a technology company, and how much of that's cloud, and what, what are those dynamics that you've been going yeah. through the last couple of years? Yeah, I think the millennials this day, they're, they're willing to go online and, and do the whole car buying experience end to end, from the buying of the car to the financing of the car, all online, and we, we can roll a flatbed up to their house <laughs> and deliver a car, and they sign on an iPad, and they're good to go, and I think that's where things are going. So to do all that requires a lot of technology on the back end. So we have a lot of on-prem infrastructure. I'd say we're still 90% on-prem, 10% in an a Azure AWS infrastructure, but that's going to change in time as a lot of these new applications are written. As you guys are doing the digital transformation, and it sounds like there's a lot of action going on, new things happening, you're in the app business. You got to build apps for user experience. So you got to make the infrastructure work for you, yeah. right? Yeah. And make it be you know, failover, fault tolerant, all that good stuff, recovery. How do you look at that? How do you run at the speed you need to run at? What are some of the key things that you guys have to do to keep on that treadmill, but yet not drop the ball on delivering apps to the users that drive the business? I think there's a few things. I think one is we have to be able to keep the lights on with our existing infrastructure, our existing apps, while we build these next generation of applications. Um, we have to be able to scale up as needed and scale down. Uh, be able to support some of the new mobile platforms that we're going to be working on. So there's a lot of work going on, uh, and DR is a big part of this too. Yeah, I, I'm glad you, glad you brought that up because data is at the core here. So, can, can you tell us that role of data? And then you say data protection. You know, how 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 is that changing? What was it like before you went through this transformation? Then we'll of course get into what you're using. Sure. So we we actually were using an old Microsoft uh, Data Protection Manager product and just didn't scale the way we needed to. We were having some performance issues, and so you know, data protection while not very sexy, it's something you have to do. It's table stakes in IT. It doesn't innovate, it doesn't make me sell more cars, it doesn't innovate, uh, help the business sell more cars, but it's something we have to do. So we looked out there at the what I call the legacy players and also the next gen players and went through a full proof of concept with several of them. All right, and what, what were you looking for? What was kind of the, the key objectives? You said, you know, data protection doesn't make you money or didn't make you money. I mean, we, we've talked to some customers that's like, wait, if I do some cool snapshotting, I can leverage that data, I can do some more things with my developers and everything. So what was the goal of this transformation? And then what, was the, what were the criteria that you went through to make a decision? Yeah, so the data protection was the initial piece and we just needed a rock solid uh, backup and recovery solution. And we started off with just uh, simple, hey, we wanted an integrated hardware software solution. We wanted something that could scale infinitely. We wanted a uh, predictive cost model. Uh, and so uh, a lot of these older legacy players don't, don't play well in that space. They're expensive to support. Eventually you hit a wall on hardware limitations and you have to do these forklift upgrades. So we wanted something that was a little bit more nimble. And then down the road, as we got into it, once the backup and recovery piece was kind of under control, we started using our new solution for other things in secondary storage, which was an added bonus. Okay, so you haven't mentioned, what, what, what is the solution that you chose, and you know, what were the key things that yeah, led to that? So after going through uh, several POCs with you know, net backup, uh, rubric, and cohesity, we ultimately chose cohesity uh, for performance, cost, ease of implementation, ease of the user interface, uh, ease of management. And what was the comparison, like rubric? Because like, on the floor here you see rubric and cohesity next to huge booths. What's the difference between those two? Yeah, so we actually put them side by side in our data center, full-blown POCs, and, and there was some performance uh, 
differences. Uh, there were some uh, technical challenges that we had with some of the other products, and ultimately the team, our engineering team, felt most comfortable with Cohesity um, after spending six or eight months in a, in a really in-depth POC. Big bake-off. Yeah. I love the bake-offs, when they have the answer like that. So when you look at the, the solutions, are you guys mostly interested in the software side of the business that they had? What was the key I think, piece of I it? I think we're interested in the whole thing. I had been at other places where we had done the net backup and data domain story, and you know, you're having a problem at three o'clock in the morning, and you got the finger pointing, you know, is it a software issue, is it a hardware issue? We wanted the, the one throat to choke kind of solution, and so you know, we, that was a requirement right off the bat. Whatever we chose was going to be an integrated hardware software platform. Adam, walk us through from the deployment to the, 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 the day two action. How did it go? What surprised you? What, you know, thrilled you, uh, you know, what challenges did you Yeah, we, we've, we've been a customer for, I think we were a very early customer, probably about almost two years now, and so uh, there's a lot we didn't know. There was a lot of things in the product that actually weren't fully mature. We start, first started the POC, and so we went through a full, a full blown bake off, and one of the things we noticed, it was much easier to implement. We didn't require any professional services to get it up and running, and the technical support we, we were super impressed with. So I think, uh, you know, the team after going through the motions really felt like this was the product for us. And again, really mainly around backup and recovery, but ultimately decided that we were going to use it for other things too. Yeah, Adam, I was walking through the hallways yesterday, Stu and I were both checking out the booths, and I hear a lot of conversations when it comes up around the, the, the Cohesity uh, rubric, uh, all these different cloud solutions. Some are rinse and repeat old models that just have, you know, and I won't say those guys are, but the customers are concerned about, I don't want the old way, I want the new way, I want to be cloud native, I want to work with cloud, one show to throw, I need software, I need to have agility and I need to have auto you know, healing, all this kind of stuff. How do you sort through that? I mean, you've been through the POC, but your, your peers that are out here at VMworld, you know, they're squinting through the noise going, okay, I got to really dig in here. What's yeah. your advice to those guys and gals? I think it's really challenging for the people that are you know, neck deep in some of these other legacy products because it's, it's a little bit hard to move. You know, it's, it's costly, it's expensive, and it's a, it's a significant effort. I was in a, in a rare position where I was able to start net new, and so uh, that made it a little bit easier. But I think you, you start with a slow migration, start setting up your new infrastructure on a, a next gen platform, and then slowly migrate off. Um, these, next, these legacy players are very expensive uh, and they don't scale very well. That's probably one of our biggest challenges. All right, one of the things you said, you, you started with a couple of use cases, but you're now doing a bunch more. Talk about that, what nor, more? What are the new things you're doing and what's the roadmap look for sure. at AutoNation? So we, uh, we had a, a lot of apps that were probably not needing tier one, NetApp, all SSD, high performance SAN. I call it my Cadillac of storage. You know, it's, it's our highest performance uh, uh, applications. And we were having some uh, apps that the, the hardware was starting to, uh, you know, to go bad. And so the only place I could put it was either on my NetApp or I didn't have any place else. So the story changed over time. Cohesity became not only our, our uh, backup and recovery uh, data protection appliance, we started landing some of our tier two storage on, uh, on Cohesity. So moving things that we would normally put on NetApp, putting it on Cohesity for 40% of the cost, and it's a win-win. All right, so Adam, I couldn't help noticing you've got the Drive Pink pin on. Yes. So maybe tell our audience a little bit about the, the you know, AutoNation Drive Pink initiative, and you know, do you have relationships with the, the, the suppliers here? Uh, Pat Gelsinger this morning talked about, you know, we, we need to be as a, as a technology community uh, more doing good. It's, it's foundational to what we're doing, so yeah. we'd love you to share. AutoNation, it's, it's, it's one of our core, core uh, uh, charities is, is uh, cancer awareness. We've, I think we've donated almost $30 million. Um, every car that you buy, we try to put the, the drive pink license plate. And I think not only for business, I think in IT, we, we also have to have a lens to some of these charities and some of these things and need our help. Mission-driven businesses are doing well now. People expect that, not just for profit, but the people involved. Yeah. Anyone can work anywhere these days. Talent, it's also good. I mean, yeah. it's one of those things. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, so take away from the show, so far your impression. As a practitioner who's in the IT footprint space, looking at a cloud on the horizon, we just had Amy Besserstein just on, who's been, been, been part of the early days. Cloud's coming fast, networking's got to get better. You got to, you know, seamless solutions integrating well together. How do you make sense of all this uh, content coming out of VMworld? Yeah, I think what I get out of this and kind of, you know, AWS, all these conferences is that everything we buy has to be extendable to the cloud. Um, you know, we still have a lot of on-premise infrastructure, but everything we implement has to be cloudable and has to be able to be used in our future uh, use cases, so. Yeah, 
I would love, we're talking a lot, here a lot in the keynote this morning, it's like, right, th this move, we know it's going to take time, and Amazon's doing some things, VMware's doing some things. How's the industry doing? How do you see the progression? What would you like to see them do more or better? If you know, we come back in a year, uh, if I give you kind of that, that magic wand. Yeah, you know, I always leave a lot of these conferences and I feel like I'm behind the eight ball in our cloud migration, but companies like us that have a lot of you know, legacy apps, they're slow to move, and, and so uh, I leave the conference, I feel like I'm behind eight ball, but I get back and I talk to my peers, and many of them are in the same situation I am. They're still maturing, um, but I think, yes, I think that the net new generation apps that we're going to build are going to be uh, in the cloud uh, because of the capabilities to auto scale, and so I think that, again, anything we buy, anything we implement, we have to have a lens to that going forward. Well, thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Sounds like you're happy with Cohesity. No, they've done a great job, we're a really happy customer. How long was that Bake Off, by the way, did you ran uh, that? We did it about six months. That's, that's yeah, pretty, pretty long. Yeah, we actually had some, again, we were very early to the game, so there were features in the product that we needed that they didn't have yet, and our agreement was, you know, we'll proceed after we, you, can, you can meet these requirements, and they did. Yeah. And Pat Gelsinger and Andy Jassy on stage, one of the things that Andy Jassy, who's been on theCUBE, talks about all the time is listening to customers. Sounds like they're listening to you guys. Absolutely, absolutely, you have to. It's such a competitive environment now. You know, if you <laughs> can't meet the customer's minimal requirements, there's somebody else that can. You got to be cloud compatible. AutoNation, breaking it down here. Here at VMware, we're bringing the practitioner perspective, the customer perspective, all these suppliers, try to bring cloud and on-premises together. Mr. the CUBE bringing you all the action here at VMworld 2018. I'm John Furrier, it's Stu Miniman. Stay with us for more coverage after this short break.